Okta knocked it out of the park once again with its earnings report this week. The identity management software company beat on both the top and bottom lines and its outlook, well, it's pretty rosy despite a global pandemic. Joining us now is Okta's co-founder and CEO, Todd McKinnon. Good to see you again, Todd. You know, I got to tell you, you'd think that this pandemic would be a tremendous um, headwind to your business, yet you continue to beat on earnings. Uh, your stock is up better than 100% year to date. How are you pulling out these results? We're very fortunate that our business is being driven by three long-term secular macro trends. The first one is companies need to use more cloud computing. All the modern solutions, all the solutions that make employees productive are cloud-based and companies need to move there. And they also need to get in tighter contact with their customers by delivering better online experiences, better websites, better mobile apps, whole new product lines that can be delivered over the, over the internet. And then they need to do that all securely. So these three macro trends are powering our business. And you know, COVID is tough. It's tough for the world. It, it's um, definitely, it's, it's a headwind to some degree for us, but we're able to drive surf on these macro trends we've been surfing on for many years and uh, hopefully um, keep focused on making customers successful and uh, keep driving the business forward. You know, Todd, I know you also announced that Octa's products are going to be available on uh, the Amazon Web Services marketplace. What kind of an impact do you see that having on overall results going forward? If you think about it from a customer perspective, there's you know, there's all kinds of technology for them to choose from. There's thousands of different applications. There's different devices, different networks, different ways to build out their technology stack and tremendous pressure to do it. And so I think the world from a customer perspective is really going to be about five or six major clouds in the future. They're going to have thousands of different pieces of technology, but they're going to have five or six major clouds. And one of those is going to be an infrastructure cloud. And Amazon is by far the leader in that market, the infrastructure cloud. So we're very fortunate to work closely with, with Amazon to, to accomplish two things. First of all, we've integrated with them in a product called Control Tower, which helps customers manage their multiple de deployments of Amazon. So it's great for customers. It gives them that identity management and security tie into that product. And then secondarily, we're on now on their Amazon marketplace, which means that large enterprise customers around the world can use their Amazon budget to buy Okta. So they can buy it through Amazon, which is great for Amazon, it's great for us. And most importantly, it's great for customers because they want an identity management service that works very well with their infrastructure. And we're working with Amazon to provide that. You know, we're seeing that businesses are spending less on office expenses simply because they're not in the office. Uh, they're not traveling, so, so business travel is way down. So are businesses then using the money they're saving in those areas and spending on things like products that your company offers? And do you see that continuing even post the pandemic? Every, every organization knows that immediately they have to be successfully working remotely, right? That's the obvious one. They have to make employees successful anywhere. And that really brings forward the realization that the security architecture and the technical architecture has to be different than it was in the past. It can't be tied to the office. It, you can't be relying on the server closet in your office or the firewall in your office. It has to be flexible and cloud-based and, and remote. So that's the first driver for Okta. The second driver is maybe a little bit more long-term, which is every company now, they've, they've kind of known they had to get online and have a great website and have a great mobile app and, and offer their products online or their support online. But now it's very, very tangible that they have to do it now. They can't, if you're a hardware store and, you, and no one can come to your hardware store, you have to have an online service for ordering so they can pick it up curbside, right? And so that's leading to investment in customer-facing websites and mobile apps and identity is at the core of that. You have to log into that service. You want a good experience. You don't want your password to expire. You don't want to forget the password. You don't want to you know, be annoyed that they can't remember your account information. And that's identity. And so these two trends, remote work and every company having to get online with great web and mobile experiences lead to identity. And that leads to our success. I've got to talk consolidation in the space because we saw it big time this week with the Salesforce Slack deal. Do you think that that's just a harbinger of things to come in 2021? Are we going to see more consolidation in the space, do you think? I think it's a great deal. I think it's a great deal for Salesforce. It gives Salesforce 
um, a lot of really good options with how to combine Slack with their company. One option is they can have it just be the front end to Salesforce and have a great modern user experience for all those Salesforce products and platforms. That's amazing. And the second option is they, with this combination, they have a, I talked about those five or six primary clouds earlier. They have a legitimate shot to challenge Microsoft for the collaboration cloud. One of these clouds is going to be around collaboration. That, the winner there might be Zoom. Um, they're very strong. It, it, Microsoft is obviously very strong in collaboration. And now Salesforce and Slack could be the king of collaboration. So I think it's um, it's interesting in terms of who's going to emerge as the winner there. What, what we're focused on is making sure that the identity cloud is one of those major clouds. And we think it should be because whether it's infrastructure or whether it's collaboration, customers want choice. They don't want to be beholden to one provider for anything. And they want choice and flexibility. And that's what we're positioning ourselves to be is that arbiter of choice. We want to do what's best for the company, not what's best for any one particular platform or one particular application. What do you make of the, uh, the takeover price? 27.7 billion, it's 26 times forward sales. Um, did, did, was it worth overpaying for, for Salesforce, do you think? I think that a lot of times these deals are strategic and with the kind of optionality it gives Salesforce and the uniqueness and of the product of Slack and the, how great of a company that is, um, I think it's easy to look for the long term and, and not be so concerned with what the specific multiple is in a given time frame or what the specific amount is. Um, this is a strategic deal and I, and I think both of those companies are going to come together and do something amazing. Of course, there was speculation right away. Could Okta be uh, a buyout target or perhaps be the acquirer? Is that something that you would entertain? And do you think that that might unlock even more value for your shareholders? Well, we're certainly into um, providing shareholder value. <laughs> we're very into that. I mean, customer value and shareholder value and, and employees. Those are our, 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 you know, three of the most important constituencies for us. The thing about Okta is that we have this unique value proposition when we're neutral. And being neutral gives the customer choice. It gives the customer choice to choose the best technology for their business. Um, you know, imagine, imagine um, someone at Microsoft building a great feature to connect a customer to Amazon Web Services. Right? That would not probably go over very well at Microsoft. So by focusing on all the services and all the platforms, we give customers choice. And that's incredibly valuable. And that's the, the, I think the most value we can build for shareholders and for Okta is, remaining, is maintaining that neutrality and that independence and always being um, driven by what's best for customers. Hey, Todd, before we let you go, I know that you're a big bike enthusiast, Jerry. You're a workout addict. When you look ahead to 2021, any New Year's resolutions yet for you? Oh, you know, I've, um, yeah, I am passionate about, about working out. One of the things I really like to do is, uh, you know, the COVID-19 and, and the pandemic, it's tough. It's tough on the employees. It's tough on people. And, um, you know, we're trying to do our best to stay motivated and stay um, active and moving around and keep our, keep our um, drive as high as ever. And so I, I want more of the employees to move around and exercise. I've been trying to share some of my workouts on social media to inspire the employees to to keep moving and stay fit. And hopefully we can uh, accomplish that. Yeah, I enjoy seeing your social media and the tips you're offering. Good stuff. Todd McKinnon, co-founder and CEO of Okta. Be well. Uh, thanks for having me on, Alex. It's always nice to be here.